we're going to forego we're going to forego with the pleasantries and we're just going to continue that was a little technical difficulty that's why that part was kind of short right there but anyway we're going to continue with the two aspects um we said earlier we said um the with the crook and the flail or the flail and the crook and um we're going we're going to deal with Ephraim, the deal of Ephraim right now, which is uh, Mamarinya is Ephraim, as well as um, Manasseh, Manasseh, um, S-E-H is how they spell it, Manasseh, Manasseh. Now, Ephraim is the will and we can put plus, affirming and denying. While Manasseh is understanding, is understanding, but it has the aspect of denial. So this will be affirmation, Ephraim, and Manasseh will be denial. But at a basic level, let's just put understanding. Understand. Now, some would say overstanding, but that would be a overstatement to say that at this point. Because we're not just going according to the English, but according to the, the Royal Amharic and according to the ancient Ethiopic. So we can't just, you know, make those kind of, it's not a leap of faith, but it's just, uh, just, just jump to certain conclusions like that before we go through the study. So this would be, un, this, this would be will, right here, will, affirmation, or affirm, put affirm right here. And under this, denial, under this understanding will be denial, right, denial, all right, and we need to go through and understand it, and this will be a minus. So this will be equivalent to the, the right here, this will be the shepherd's crook, right, and this would be the, the flail, the symbols for, now they united, they united in the father, the father of these two was, Joseph, or we know as Yosef, Yo Safe, right? And Yosef is synonymous with the Ray or the Rai, the vision. In fact, when you look in the scriptures, much that is said of Joseph, even from the beginning, has to do with the vision. He was the one that saw, you know, the stars and the sun and the moon bowing to him in a Rai or in a vision. Now, Manasseh or Manasseh was the first one, but yet when their father, or rather grandfather, um, Yaiko, or Israel, when he blessed the sons, he actually reversed his hand and actually gave um, the first, you could say the firstborn blessing of um, that kind of rulership, you can say, that kind of rulership to um, Manasseh who was the second son, and not to, um, I mean, to Ephraim, who was the second son, not to Manasseh. So Manasseh is firstborn, firstborn understanding. You understand? Firstborn aspect of the mind is that understanding. And also with this is forgetfulness. Remember, Manasseh means, and let's just put this up here. You understand? Forgetfulness. Forgetfulness is usually how, when you look up in the Bible um, uh, dictionaries or dealing with the meaning of these Hebraic, um, Ethiopic Hebraic name, Manasseh would be forgetfulness. Now, this is continuing on where we left off before at this beginner's level because here the metaphysical Bible dictionary, you understand, which we we're referencing right here, tells us some very important gives us some very important um, clues and keys based on the scriptures, based on the B-I-B-L-E. Firstly, it's stating at this point that the first step, the first step that a beginner or a newcomer, a Adis Christian or Adis Met, a newcomer in truth or to the truth, takes is to set up a new and better state of consciousness, of consciousness. So, this is a consciousness, we could say, um, lecture or teaching right here, speaking about the apps or the applications based, and here's the key, 
the key is the key is the base. Here's the key. Um, the key is the base. Based on based on the absolute. Based on the absolute. We talked about the cornerstone. You hear a lot of people about the cornerstone, the cornerstone, the capstone, and and some of us, and even to a point, as I might have said it once or twice or so, you know, one thing about the cornerstone as being, you know, like when you look at the pyramid, you know, that the cornerstone is there, is that is that that part right there where they put their eye through it and they say that's the cornerstone right there. But actually, the cornerstone is the first stone, is the foundational stone. It's like when you see um, even masons and builders today, especially if they're building in stone or, or you say masonry, they usually would have a laying of that first foundational stone. That is the stone. It's the first stone when it says that... Um, the stone that the builders refuse has become the first stone, the first laid, the very first laid stone of the building. So there's a difference between the capstone. That's a whole different teaching rate there, although a lot of people believe that the cornerstone is really that stone up there and not the first structural stone. So when we're talking about being based on the absolute, this is all being based on the absolute, and it's interesting the connection between, like, under Yosef here, we have the uh, Atum Ray, right? And then we have the Pi Tum, and then Ethiopically, we have Fisum, sometimes written as Fisum. With these two letters here are interesting. We have a one is a e eh, and one is a t e. Eh, eh. One is a s e. Eh. So this is su and this is tu. But if you break that down, you have the pi or the fit, which is the pi, or more extended is the op, the op right here, which is the mouth. Then you have it in the Ethiopic, the af. So the af in Ethiopic, and the pi or the put in um, Hebrew refers to the same principle, the pi principle and the principle of the mouth. That's why they talk about right speech, especially if it's coming from the right place, has, has, has a great strength and energy to it and can even do what men and people may call um, miracles in that sense. But miracles are nothing other than highly learnt um, doings within the order of creation. In other words, there is a knowledge of miracles, but most people have been, in a sense, um, maybe so dumbed down or unacquainted that when they see these things, it's like I use this example, that when you go to people who are living more primitive, you know, and more earlier, first state existence around the world, and you bring any technology over here, you understand, it could be, it could be even a lighter, like in those movies, a lighter is like, wow. He can make fire from his hand. He just go like this, like some, do something, and fire comes out. You can imagine how that would have been seen. Now, once you become familiarized and you get the knowledge of what a lighter is, then the so-called, the hocus-pocus so-called miraculousness, it becomes an invention. It becomes something that is a learned thing to do. So when we study the etymology of miracles Ethiopically, we get to recognize the basis on knowledge. But for this teaching, the base for the newcomer or the beginner must be upon the situm, must be upon, and let's give a definition of that as well, as we gave in the last part, the um, situm or the pi tum can mean the, the all, right, that which is all in the sense of the shimmer, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might as well as the sense of be ye perfect, as Christ says, be ye perfect. Now, bringing it down to our level, or a level that maybe we can grasp a little better, it also is used in the sense of when a prophecy is fulfilled, tefet semen, it is fulfilled. But then it has the overall aspect, and I think hopefully for all of this you can get this, the last word we're going to use for a definition in the sense of fitum or paitum would be complete the sense of being complete, in other words, like lacking nothing. So this all now is the pi tomb, the pi tomb, the completeness or the absolute, 
or I like to say, I used to like to say the Ab, the Ab salute. You know, words, the Ab, the Father, solves it. You know what I'm saying? The Father, some would say soul, but we're saying uh, salute in the sense of solution. The Father's pattern or the Father's solution. A curious thing that in Ethiopic to say pattern is to say the word abnet. And that actually would mean like fatherness in a sense. Abnet is the fatherness. And this is what Atum Re became even in that earlier day. He was the perfection now. Now the fatherhood was was revealed, was recognized, and it was identified. You know what I'm saying? And this is the very same stage where now the Bible is coming out of Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Where the theology, once it was perfected, fitun, you know what I'm saying? Others who were in other denominations in Egypt, like Christianity today, preferred to stay with the old wine and what they were doing and did not recognize the fulfillment of all the the old, Old Testament types. But now the Bible is coming out of that true um, faith-based spirituality. You understand? So there's a certain faith-based spirituality that when we look at the different religious denominations in Egypt, we'll see that the Hebrews or the Hebrews were a particular were a particular one. And there were other Egyptians and other peoples who freely also accepted that this now fulfills it, this completes it, this explains the purposes of God or the vision in that day and time. So Yosef or Joseph, as well as his sons, became, you could say Joseph was the, not the starter of a religious denomination, but because of his example, many were of a religious denomination which linked with Yosef, you understand, or Ayusif, the Ayusif, the Eosif. Joseph. So when the Pharaoh comes along later on, who says that, um, but he knew not Joseph. He didn't want to know Joseph. He knew what Joseph represented, but he was in the degenerate earlier forms of the religion. He didn't want to move on to the perfection of fatherhood, to the perfection of God. He was still in the, you could say, for lack of a better word, he was still in the goddess worship, basically, or really the degenerate goddess worship. You understand? Because there was a goddess, not a goddess, but the female archetype to replace that had already come into effect. But even um, Miriam, Moses' sister, she had some difficulty because you have to remember who she was in the old system of things. That's why she says, does only God speak to to Moses? You understand? He married this Ethiopian woman. So, so even she felt that her power base was being affected because when they crossed the Red Sea, she sung with the Kaburo and she had daughters who followed her. So she was of a certain order because there's orders for sons and there's orders for daughters, even straight through to the New Testament. But a little bit of the old Egyptian um, pomp and pride was still associated with her thinking that she could not really understand, and she felt that, oh, didn't God also speak to me? How about when I saved my brother with a basket? And, you know, she was feeling the way, and you, you have to be able to understand it while not hating on her, but really understand the psychology, you understand, the psychology, especially when you was on this, on this cusp of going from one religious, one world system into another. This is, I keep focusing on this because this is important in this day and time. We're in that time of change as well. Not just because of Obama. You know, Obama is a sign of that. A very, a very, a very, can be taken as a positive. Like we ask about Obama, is he a Joseph or anti-Joseph? So far, he's proven to be a Joseph. So we better maximize the time because after Joseph, we'll rise up one that says, I don't know Joseph. You know what I'm saying? Don't be surprised if another president come along and might publicly even say, I don't know if Obama was really the president, but we just got to move on, where, where they were kind of like, even though he did what he did, and some of the things have been positive in that sense for the lost sheep or at least for the diaspora in this interim phase that we're in, such as health care and other kind of benefits, that the haters wanted to cut all those things off. They really wanted just to kill, kill it before it grows. They see the handwriting on the wall, and they say, kill it before it grows. So in a sense, Obama is, um, is in a certain situation. Some would say, uh, F Obama, so forth and so on. Well, we're not going to approach it that way, not faith-based, not based on the absolute. We'll, we'll say we'll pray for We'll pray for the brother. You understand? Some may not think so. Some say you're down with the New World Order. So who are you down with? 
uh, what kind of money you use? You, you you got some other system. You write on a piece of paper how much the money is worth, and people respect. Oh, you still use money too? You know what I'm saying? You still have ID. You still function in this world system. So one has to watch how they judge by certain appearances and so forth and so on. Yes, there are certain globalists and all this and that. But you got to know who you are. And once you know who you are, those things become less awesome. And what becomes really awesome is the, is the mystery of resembling God, is the mystery of godliness. That's what really becomes awesome. That's what you pursue. So at this first step, the beginner in truth take, takes is to set up. We have to set up a new, renewed state of mind. We're pointing to Romans chapter 12, verse 2, a renewed state of mind. To re don't be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and a better state of consciousness that's not just based on being black. Like some just base it, you see how much melanin I got? I'm real black and she's real black. Cause look how dark she is. Look at him. He's black. But we're not as melanated and therefore blah, 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 whatever. That's not based on the absolute. That's based on the projection from the absolute principle that you are now judging based on appearances. So, yes, it means something, but not quite what some folks um, would um, make believe that it means. But now we can move forward. So what one must do is first he forgets or denies. At this first step, when you base it on the absolute, Manasseh is still the firstborn because there's that understanding. But at this level of understanding, he must, Manasseh, forget, right, and or deny the not good. He must deny the ako kameze. The ako kameze. And the good is, that's how Azarius, the son of Zadok, the high priest of, of, of Solomon's time, in the 91st chapter of the Kukur Neges, otherwise known as the Queen of Sheba, and her only son Minulik, now we have access to the Gutters text of this, of the Kippur Neges. This is I and I older copy, but we're printing up some new copies along with, for the first time, the Gutters. You understand? The Gutters of this. So ones and ones who are so inclined can study the Gutters of the Ethiopic alongside with um, um, E.A. Wallace Budge translation, which overall is a pretty good translation. You understand? When, we, when you're able to look at the good, I think it's as good as or better than the King James translation of the manuscripts that they allegedly use. But to get this, this, this next or the part of this step of basing, setting the base, the meseret, the foundation, that he bases this new and better state of consciousness upon the absolute. He forgets or denies the not good. He forgets or denies that which is not good. And when I heard not good, and it was quoted right here, I thought about this book right here, The Queen of Sheba and Only Some Minulik, especially a particular chapter, 91, and 91st chapter is called, This is What Ye Shall Eat, The Clean and the Unclean. And so it goes through, um, many of the like like animals that the Israelites were to were permitted to eat, and many of the animals, the, the clean and the unclean animals. And then as you go into it in the first, second, third, at about the fourth paragraph here on page one sixty one, it says um, not thus. And if you go further, it says. Not thus it is good. This is the section right here. Not thus it is good. And this is where um, the queen of uh, Sheba now was getting, you could say, lectured by Azarius, the high priest. And Azarius was the son of uh, Sadok or Zadok. And Zadok was King Solomon, Solomon's high priest. So Azarius went now with um, Menelik or Eben Hakim into this new country to establish or to renew the kingdom of David, the kingdom of David in the highlands that we call Ethiopia or Tobia or the African Zion. And at this particular point, he, all of it is, is, is really important, but we'll get into the fullness of it at, a, at, a, at another time. But 
this part, I think I need to paraphrase this by the paragraph, part of the paragraph before, so if you will. On page 160, under the 91st chapter, Amazarius lecturing to the Queen of Sheba publicly says, As for thee, O my lady, thy wisdom is good, and it surpasseth the wisdom of men. There is none that can be compared with thee in respect of thy intelligence, not only in the manner of the intuition of the woman who have been created up to this present, but the understanding of thine heart, speaking of her consciousness, is deeper than that of men. And there is none who can be compared with thee in the abundance of thine understanding, except my Lord Solomon. And thy wisdom so far exceedeth that of Solomon, that thou hast been able to draw hither the mighty men of Israel, and the tabernacle of the law of God, of Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, with the ropes of thine understanding. And thou hast overthrown the house of their idols, and destroyed their images, and thou hast cleansed what was unclean among thy people, for thou hast driven away from them that which God hateth. Now here's the part that links with this first step, where one must forget or deny the, quote, not good. That which is not good, one must forget about it or deny it and bring into vivid remembrance the very good, the very good by affirming it to be real, by a state of mind, by affirming it to be real. Don't sit around like, oh, well, I don't know. So you already know it's not good. Why don't you deny that first? You, you deny the not good. You understand? Know Forget about it. Deny the not good. Then you have more space on your hard drive, in a sense. You understand? To affirm and to bring into vivid HD high density the very good by affirming it to be real. Now, in this paragraph from the Kippur and the Guest 91st, here's what Azarius goes on to say that really brought something out, you know, out in I and I consciousness. I said, I have to share this about, because we talked about the Queen of Sheba, and even Christ mentions the Queen of Sheba, the Moshiach. Yehoshua mentions the Queen of Sheba in a very cryptic and enigmatic way, and there's a meaning and an application for us, even and especially in the present time, concerning it is the Titu Ethiopia or holy Ethiopia or the New Jerusalem. It says, And as concerning thy name, God Ha Elohim hath prepared it especially, for he hath called thee Makeda, that he has called thee Makeda, not Makeda or even Makeda, but Makeda, according to the Ethiopic. That's the source of it, right? Okay. Whereof the interpretation is not thus. So the interpretation of the name Makeda, according to the high priest of Zarius, was that the name means not thus, not this. So when Azarius, being a, a ancient Hebraic speaker, heard this name Makeda, the vision that was shown to him was that the interpretation of this name means not thus. Now, just a portion I wish we had the opportunity, well, I would like for us to have and gain the opportunity to go through the cover and the guess, even in its um, Ethiopic original version. But here is this line right here where I just read in the good, as we wrote it down for this purpose, it says, Wele Sima Kini Egezi Abi Her Asa Tedaluwu. Le Samayaki Makeda Wetter Wimanihu Ako Kamaze Behil Ako, not thus Ako Kamaze, not like this Kamaze Ako, no, not Kame, like ze, not like this Ako Kamaze Behil to say the the Targwema Nehu, or Targwema Nihu, Targwem Nihu, let's say the Targum, the interpretation, or the Targum, the Ethiopic Targum, 
for this name is Ako Kamaze. Because many people go around and they say, well, Makeda means this, Makeda means that, or Makeda, Makeda, you understand, as others who are um, Ethiopically um, challenged would, would, would say or pronoun pronounce from what they think sound good or something like that. Ako Kamaze. It's not thus. Now, when he goes on, when the Zarius goes on to explain this to the Queen of Sheba and to her people, he says, Consider thou the people of thy nation, with whom God, Ha Elohim, was not well pleased. And thou shalt say, I call, come as it. Not thus is it good. Uh, shani, 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 or Sani. Not thus, Ako Kamaze Shaniz or Saniz. It's not thus, it is good. But it is right that we should worship God. So, in other words, uh, the lesson of the name Makeda is that Makeda would say, when she considered the people of a nation whom God wasn't well, well pleased with, she would say, it's like to say, Ako Kamaze, Kamaze Saniz or, 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 or Sani. Sinui or Sinui, Sinui, I think it's Sinui, yeah, for the good, it's, it's a Sinui, it's not like this, like this, no, no good, not good, you understand, so this is a link with the first basic level of teaching, you understand, concerning using the, the, the affirmation and the denial, or really the denial actually comes first. You understand? The denial, the understanding, the forgetting, the denying it. So he goes through and says, not thus. It is good to worship the sun. Not thus. Ako kamaze sinui. You understand? To worship the sun. It is not, not like this. It is good to worship the sun. But it is right to worship God. So if you look at that sun and recognize that's just a symbol of his handiwork. Right there. You know what I'm saying? But as that is great, the one who created is greater, well, that is good. But to worship the sun as though it were, you understand? Thou will say, not thus it is good. Ako senui, to inquire of the diviner or the, or the, the shaman, the African witch doctor or the obia man. But it is better to trust. It is better to trust in God, Ha Elohim Baruchu. Thou will say, I call Kamaze Sinui, to resort to the working of magic. But it is better to lean upon the Kedusu the Israel, or the Holy One of Israel. Thou will say, I call Kamaze Sinui, to offer up sacrifice sacrifices to stone and trees. But it is right. It is a ret it is the retu you understand it is a ret it it is right and exact to offer up sacrifice, especially of praise to the true and living God. Thou will say Ako Kemze Sinui to seek augury from birds. So when you hear the phrase inauguration, that's what's behind it. When you hear, we're well, about to have the inauguration, that's an augury. That's, that's witchcraft. That's magic. That goes count contrary to the very Bible that they vainly put their hand on. If it is even the Bible, I don't know. I haven't seen it. But Ako Kemazir Sinui, to seek augury from birds. But it is right to put confidence in the Fetari, in the Kurita, thou wilt say. So it is interesting, this paragraphical that we just wanted to share, where it speaks the very same language of the first level of a beginner in truth, setting up a new and a better uh, Adis and Yemishalo uh, state of Labona or of consciousness that's based upon the Fitum or the Fitum, the Paitum, the Absolute. He must, he or she, must forget and deny that which is ako kemeze sinui. You understand? Forget all that which is not good. You understand? And bring into vivid remembrance. This is why the key we said for a newcomer or a disciple, the first thing is to remember the send bet. See, first of all, you need to make that time. You need to set aside that time. Because people say, oh, I have no time. Well, you got the Sabbath. Oh, I can't even do that because you're in bondage. 
You need somebody to deliver you. I mean, you're a captive. Or, I mean, what's up? I thought people have freedom over so-called religion. <laughs> you know, so people don't really have that excuse so much. You know what I'm saying? But bring to vivid remembrance the very good by affirming it. So keeping the Sabbath, the sin that the Shabbat set apart, is a way of our affirming it to be the real. This is the real. And what they do out there in Babylon and their devil's uh, Sabbaths when they go out on Friday night to the club and the party and get caught in all type of things they don't even know. They're worshiping unknown gods. You understand? Because the fact they'll say that they're not worshiping any gods. That's what they don't even know. And all that's a part of witchcraft. All that is evil. Those of us who've been club hoppers, we've been out there. Yeah, we didn't go out there with that intention, but there's a whole lot of evil out there. You understand? It's only by the grace of God. Somebody was praying for I and I when, you know, the fact that we didn't end up like many others. I don't want to even get emotional, man, when I think some of the others that didn't, in a sense, didn't make it. You, so when people, when these, some of these youth with their pants hanging down, you know, sagging niggas want to talk about, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, old man, or you don't know what you're talking about, you, we're with it. If they survive, you know, they, you know, man said that they like wisdom because they like experience. So sometimes you have to get out the way and let a person have the experience. You understand? Then they, he who feels it, right? He who feels it, knows it, right? Very good, very good. So that's the first level. The first level is to use this faculty of Manasseh understanding to forget and deny that which is Ako, Kamaze, Sinui. You understand? All that which is not like this good. You understand? That which is not good, in other words. All that which is like this, that is not good. And bring into vivid remembrance the very, the what? The very. Good. So when it says that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, when man was created, you understand, what did the Almighty say? He said, he said, oh, my old, you understand, oh, my old, very good. So we have to over, we have to, we have to, um, over that right there, that is very, very good by affirming it, the true man and the true image of the true creator, you understand, to be the real. So these two sons... These two sons of Yosef, of Joseph, these two sons of Yosef, the understanding, Manasseh, right, and the will, Ephraim, or Ephraim, are to be especially active in the one who would overcome and master the sensations of the body or the sensations of the carnal. And this is all dealing with the basic, the basic first level. So when we talked about, we got to segue in the last one about like sexuality. And some might have thought that the title or going into that was a little bit like, why are you dealing with sexuality and all that? You know, we're here to learn about God. You know, that's like, you know, you like what? You know what I'm We have to learn to overcome and master these things that really has many in bondage. I mean, we're already in this world of sin, but we have to recognize what what are the weapons, what are the protection, what are the shields, what are the, you, you know, what are, what, what are the applications that we can apply that as, as, little by little, you understand, we can overcome and gain a mastery, as it says, overcome and master, not destroy the sensations of the body like some of the pseudo-ascetics do, but actually to overcome and to master the sensations of the body. Like they say in ancient Kemet, the feelings make for good servants. The feelings and emotions are good servants, but poor masters. So the feelings and sensations of the bodies are good servants. Like if you feel all hungry, you understand, physically, well, that tells you, you know, you got to eat some. But if you just eat them because you're thinking about food, that means you have to deny, you understand, you have some, you have some mental work to, to do, but it begins with these two powers, the plus power and the negative power, but the negation power is really the firstborn. Later on, the second child or the second power becomes the first one, but it's important to understand that at the beginning level, the first thing one must do is forget and deny, you understand, and, and affirm, deny the non-good and affirm that which is really real, that which is really true, that's based on the absolute, that's not up to speculation or whatever, some things that are very firm. In reality, this is why in the ancients they would teach ones about the cross and the four elements or the four gez, 
the four get um um or, or, or the four gimels. You understand? The, not the four camels, but the four gez. If you put that, you get like a swastika in the Ethiopic. And this is like the four elements. Because the four elements were absolutes. Were some absolutes in our reality. But to show as these physical elemental absolutes are absolute, that there is the principles behind this, which because we are a reflection made in the image and after the likeness, we have the ability to master these within ourselves. And if people spend more time on self-mastery, they'll spend less time on, on a lot of other um, less productive activities. Now it says that their allotment, Ephraim and Manasseh, or Manasseh and Ephraim, their allotment in the promised land was in joint ownership. In other words, they had an allotment in the promised land, but they, they had a joint ownership of their allotment. You understand? This shows that they should go hand in hand. In other words, these two. So now notice, Ephraim, the shepherd's crook, Manasseh, the flail. These go hand in hand, as in ancient Egypt, based on the same absolute principle. These are just principles without all the superstition and other kind of um, things that a lot of the, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the false priests made up all these other things to keep their business going. Just like nowadays, they, they be doing a lot of the counterfeit charges to keep their little racket going and everything like that. But when you get beyond that, you recognize these go hand in hand. In all building of permanent character, in the building of permanent character, so when we talk about Christ in his kingly character, you understand, that is, that is the fulfillment of that mystery of resembling God. You understand? Within the real world. You understand? We're talking about the real world Christos. If it happens to be the black Messiah, well, so be it. You understand? Judged by righteousness and not by appearance. It says, in all building of permanent character and body, the action of the will, represented by Ephraim, Ephraim must be based, notice that, must be based upon what? Upon understanding, which is Manasseh. So when Yaakov or Israel reversed his hand in the blessing of the two sons and Yosef, the father, protested. He says, how can you do that? This is the first one. You have to give it to the first one, the first one, the second one, the second one. But Yaakov or Israel reversed his hand. He, he kind of made like St. Andrew's cross in a sense. He reversed his hand in the blessing. There's a purpose that we see fulfilled even down to our very present time in Rastafari Revelation as we learn who's who. Now, just to conclude this part, because in another part we'll have to touch on Manasseh. This is just touching on Ephraim. And we decided to go with Ephraim first since he was made as that firstborn. You understand? Know, as that firstborn. Um, the crown of pride of the drunkards of Ephraim. Isaiah 28 and 3 speaks about the crown of pride of the drunkards of Ephraim. And the amazing thing I began to notice by Ethiopians and home and abroad, excuse me, is the fact that we both got drunkards. You know, the little joke in the Ethiopian communities, um, what is it, Arake? 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 It's a kind of a real, it's almost like we would call corn, corn liquor, corn alcohol. You understand? And, and even in some of the African movies, the palm wine, palm wine, that we have these drunkards, and always in some of these movies and in some of these uh, stories that are told, you understand? There's always the, this drunkard. There's always that drunkard. Sometimes the drunkard who's just stupid, foolish, don't be like him. Other times that drunkard has some type of wisdom, amazingly, is his drunkenness. But here from Isaiah 28 and 3, just to know what ground we are building on and standing on, we're going to just get a, get a flyby. Let's just do a flyby on that before we conclude this portion of the teaching. 28 and 3, 28 and 3, it says, Woe, the woe of Ephraim, the prediction of the Syrian captivity of Ephraim. And it begins off even saying, Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. They are overcome with wine and strong drink. Then it goes on to say, Behold, Adonai hath a mighty and strong one. 
which as a tempest of hail, you can begin a lot of hail lately, haven't haven't ones and ones. And a destroying storm, a lot of those have been going around, it seems like nowadays, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing. Hasn't that been going on too? We began a hail and the destroying storm and the flood of mighty waters shall cast down to the earth with the hand. So we're seeing that, you know, there's some fat valleys over here in America. After all, America used to be the breadbasket of the world, but it seems that they have like pseudo dust bowl. They have a drought over here in America like, like in the Horn of Africa. Can't blame Howard Selassie for that one, can you? You understand? Know anyway, um, it goes on to say that the crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be tr trodden, shall be trodden underfoot. So here, this is a whole, a whole judgment. There's a judgment sequence that is going through here. But the interesting thing is in, in the same chapter that we find the verse where it says, Therefore thus saith Adonai, Yahweh, or Adonai Yahweh, or Adonai Jehovah, Behold, I lay in Zion, in Zion, for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, and there was a proven stone, a precious corner stone, that's that first stone, a sure foundation, no matter what kind of rubbish they want to bring, the foundation will remain sure. He that believeth, or he that mameneth, yetameneth, ras taman, and he who admits in the truth shall not make haste. And then there's a very interesting, we could say biblical Masonic language. In verse 17 it says, Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. The plummet. And the hill shall sweep away the refuge of lies. And the waters shall overflow the hiding places. And in verse 18, And your covenant with death, the covenant that humanity has made with death, shall be disannulled, and your agreement with Seol or the Duat shall not stand when the overflowing scourge shall pass through. The scourge, remember the scourge is that flail, but the scourge also is likened to punishment or judgment, shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. And there's some very interesting things <laughs> that I actually said in this particular chapter, chapter 28. But this comes after a section called Israel Regathered. So it's important for us to understand prophetically as well how important this teaching is. Make a note of this, brothers and sisters. We don't have the opportunity at one time to go into every area and get some of the nuances that are necessary. So we have to try to lay it out as subject and subject matter. But the crown of pride of the drunkards of Ephraim. Here it says, see um, Temnat. Temnath Heres, Temnath Heres, Temnath Heres, and foot, and foot, it says, according to Isaiah 28 and 3. In other words, there's a reference, another reference, um, Temnath Heres, Temnath Heres. Uh, do I have any space to put that up there? Um, but see, Temnath Heres, I'll see if I can put it over here. This is just a, another another reference um, that goes with this, Timnath, H-E-R-E-S, Timnath, Timnath, Harris, H-E-R-E-S. And we did scroll there in, prep in, in preparation for this um, particular study and to give you a, a, a brief flyby of that as well, Timnath, Harris, um, means um, portion of Heres, of Heres. Now, in Hebrew, there's a couple of different words for sun. Besides, there's more than one type of word for sun because it's speaking about the sun in different, for lack of a better word, in different um, um, Coptic or according to the Coptic theology of the ancients, according to the ancient Egyptian you know, there's different, there's the rising sun, there's the full sun, there's the setting sun. So there's different words for sun, even within the Ethiopic as well, Jembero, you understand, as well. But anyway, it means the portion of the sun. And there is a particular reference to this, to the particular teaching that we are in right now. But to stay on the basic 
the basic discipleship lesson of using the ability to understand and to forget and deny that which is not good on the one hand, you understand, and then to make our wills, as his majesty teaches, make our wills obedient, and the word obedient um, is also the Shema, the Simma, to Simma, the Shema has that same idea as in Deuteronomy uh, 6 and 4, the great commandment, Hear, O Israel, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Achad, Hear, O Israel, and to love him, it says, right, with all, fitun, with our full or complete, our absolute heart, our absolute soul, and our absolute might, both our physical strength, you understand, me and our labor in the community, you understand, our labor for his sake, physical, as well as financial, now, whatever wealth, because all that goes with our labor, you understand, or represents our might in that, in that um, sense right there. So, tenoth heres in the foot, and foot go together in the teaching, based on Isaiah 28 and 3, and tenoth heres is the pride of personality is the pride of personality. Nowadays they call the pride of personality the cult of personality. The egoist, the one who is caught up on the ego, you know what I'm saying, self-centered. Remember the first chakra, the root chakra, is also dealing with that um, overly self-centered physical. This is the first aspect. Remember, that was according to the chakras based off of the seven nations, the seven seals, and we linked that with the uh, with even you could say the seven churches are also part of that as well, as far as according to the template. But the first one, the root one, which was was Heth or the or the Hittites, you understand, know as a group type, as a thought, as a certain thought people, links with that first that root chakra at the base of the uh, uh, the base of the spine, or what the, what they call the bone, the coccyx bone, you understand. Know but that within the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah. The Ethiopic Kabbalah also links with this very first step right here where one has to overcome the pride of person. And each of us, all of us, none of us accept it. Some people say, I'm not like that. That, per that person has maybe even more problems because you didn't even think about it yet. You, you need to examine yourself. You understand? First you need to learn, what, get an understanding, and then based on that understanding, to examine yourself and to deny, you understand, forget about and deny that which is Ako Kemazet, Shanui, that which is not good, and to affirm, as his imperial majesty teach, to make our rules obedient to good influences, you understand, and to avoid evil is to show the greatest wisdom, but in order to follow this aim, you know, one must be guided by hymenotes, by the living faith, by true religion, in other words, or what we may call today spirituality, which is the teaching of his imperial majesty, which is studying our Bible, you know, saying, getting to know what's what, and the really real. So the egoist, the one who is caught up on me, 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 me. This is why Rastafari even was grasping for that certain level, the people, the community, when we say, bun of me. Before, if one of the ones used to say back in the strict days of Iyerich, some say we should return there. I say not. We should learn from there. But the ones would run out of me. So people used to say, me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. You understand? Me-ism. This all this kind of me-ism. Run out of me. But it's I and I in the sense of I and the Father. And therefore now, once one comes to term of I and the Father, then it's I and I. But a lot of people just look at I and I. They just look at it horizontally but not vertically. First must be that relationship with the Almighty, as when we make the sign of the cross, from heaven, right, to earth, you understand, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy. The Holy is the left side. The, the Holy Spirit stretch out the arms, one God, the sign of the cross. That's how it was done in the ancient days. A lot of other things have been incorporated, and here and there you can see shadows of the original. You know what I'm saying? But it's from heaven to earth, in the name of the Father and the Son. So the Son came from the Father to earth. So it's from the mind first by learning, and then it's the heart, the consciousness. You understand? It's that heart that comes next, in other words, the hearticle, not the artificial. So the egoist is artificial. The egoist builds up a false 
false states of mind. The ego was, says, well, that's you, not me. But they didn't, they didn't even think about it. Think about it. They, they, they never consider it or even thought about it. They just say, you know, they, they have all these false states of mind. The thought back of them being, the thought back of the egoist and the thought in behind these false states of mind that the egoist, my, 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 me, 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 what I want from me, don't care about nobody else, behind this, you understand, know behind that, the thought that's behind it is sense gratification. It, it's physical sense gratification. They want to see and touch and feel and get this sense gratification. In other words, their spiritual senses are dulled or even deaded. You understand? Know so the fruit that such states of mind bring forth are what we call tabia, tabia or you might know it better in the first psalm as the chaff, the chaff which the wind drives away. Now, I know as Rastafari, when we chant the first psalm, we would have chanted in the more Iric Rastafari sense of um, the, the, the wind, as the wind drives them away, the word, sound, and power. It was the word, sound, and the power. But unless you understand the word, and unless it's in the proper sound, you understand, coming from the right, the you know the right in foundation it will lack that power it will lack that real power now some might call this magic they say this is and at a certain level it probably will seem like magic like Christ walking on water and healing different people by uttering certain words or doing some basic simple things you understand but that's based not on the things he was doing like Solomon magic you understand but it's based on word sound magic They're not based on things, shapes, orders, arrangement, magic, but it's based on the integrity of the utterer, the integrity of the one who speak, and their connection with source. You know what I'm saying? To bring into the real world the effects that are called for, you know what I'm saying? By the true word, sound, and power. But the fruits of the negative states of mind, or the crown of pride, or the egoist, the cult of personality, the pride of personality, the fruits now of such states of mind bring forth chaff and humiliation, and humiliation. The mind becomes confused. When one lives in that perpetual state of the ego, the, the, the self-centered person, over time, if something doesn't catch them up early and maybe take them out of this orb called the earth and this life, this world, they, they later on grow to a confused and unstable, producing dis-ease and weakness of the body. I really hate to say this in the sense if it offends anybody, but when you hear about these diseases nowadays that people will get, like called the diseases of Egypt, such as, for example, Alzheimer's for, for a moment, I know that some of the popular people, I'm not saying your loved one, I don't know your loved one, but I'm talking about some of the popular people, the president, the former president, and others that get these diseases like Alzheimer's. They had everything in the world. They, they were on the top of the world, but yet by their power and position, they did not serve truth. But they gave over their mind and their power to a lot of pretenses. And I think that when these people get to a certain state, you understand, especially old age, and, and they have to remember what they do with their life, their mind becomes very confused because they projected one kind of imagery, but the true state of themselves they're confronted with. So I think there's some link to what they call Alzheimer's with this crown of pride of the drunkard state where the fruit of such states of mind bring forward are chaff and humiliation. The mind becomes confused and unstable. Producing the dis-ease, producing dis-ease and the weakness, you know, and weakness of the body or the carbon, this carbon organic structure that's based on the black dot, the carbon, this carbon organic structure that we call um, the physical body. So the true crown of glory. Now, on the opposite end, the true crown of glory and the diadem of beauty that's also contained in this 28th chapter of, of um, Isaiah, according to the Rai, the vision, are the attainment of understanding, masterwell, of the principles of truth, the true crown of glory, you know what I'm saying, and that diadem of beauty are the attainment of understanding, you know what I'm saying, the attainment of understanding of the principles of the principles of truth and the understanding 
of how to express these, how to express these in mind, in body, and in affairs. I would say how to express them in our tripartite being, how to express them in, 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 in spirit, soul, and in body, in our actual, you know, affairs, both the internal affairs as well as the external affairs of other men and, and people, the, that judgment before God and man. Not just before God. Some people say, well, you don't know me. God knows my heart. Well, yeah, that's, that's very, very good. But all the fruits we see from you, you understand, seem to tell us that you've got a crown of pride, that what you're saying doesn't agree with that. You know what I'm saying? So these are some of the excommunicates, those, who, those cats that want to stay in those confused states of mind. They cannot really enter in. You know what I'm saying? Because they feel very uncomfortable with these sort of teachings, with this sort of truth. You know what I'm saying? Instead, they want to hear somebody, you know, um, you know, act a fool, you know what I mean, or get caught up on an ego or something like that. But there's more information on the hill country, because Timnath Heres was the hill country of Ephraim, and then there is also a link. There is also a link to uh, Joshua, the Old Testament Joshua. Now, the Ephraimite means one who belongs to Ephraim. It's a person belonging to the Israelites' tribe of Ephraim, according to 1 Samuel 1 and 1. But metaphysically, Ephraim, like Manasseh, represents certain thoughts and thought faculties, you understand, know within man. And this is a thought that belongs to the will faculty. So, Keely, um, Ephraim belongs to the will you understand the will faculty that is in man. Now, we most likely will leave off the expanded teaching on, on, on Manasseh for a little bit later, but to sum up that Manasseh, as with the Manassehites, are the thoughts springing from and belonging to the understanding faculty of mind. In its, this is key, in its outer negative aspect, in its outer negative aspect, because it does relate, Manasseh relates to the understanding, but we have to put it in proper context. It belongs to the understanding faculty of the mind, of the Aimro, but in its outer in the outer and the negative aspect, in its outer and its negative aspect. Now, exactly how does that, um, um, how do we deal with the specifics of it? But it's interesting that Manasseh, we start with Manasseh. It's just like we have to start with learning that um, the white, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus is a fraud. You understand? That um, the modern Jews and a lot of, these other ones are just people who converted to these religions, but the real ancestors that we read about in the scripture were what we would call black people or Ethiopian people. You understand? So some of that is, is are negative aspects. They're negative because we have to kind of like learn something about them in, in, in the outer way. You understand? And there's a negative aspect to that, but that's important to help us to forget and deny that which is not good. So we can say Jesus Christ. And even hopefully, we, maybe we could say Jesus, but we should elevate to Jesus or Yeshua. You know, saying again, without thinking, overly thinking, a blonde haired, blue eyed man, Caesar Borgias. So we have to first use that aspect of understanding to deny. You know, saying when they tell us we're just niggas, we don't have no history, no culture, we have to first get to understand in order to get to that first step, which is the understanding that helps us to deny that which in its outer and negative aspect is that understanding faculty of the mind that is known as um, a Manasseh or the Manasseh, the Manasseh aspect and the Manasseh um, quality. Now, it's important for us to get into the details of Manasseh, you understand, or Manasseh, because Manasseh is the, other, is the brother of Ephraim. And so far over these um, couple of videos, we have really focused more on um, Ephraim, because we start with Ephraim, which is the second born. The second born we started with instead of the first born following Yaakov's, um, Yaakov's lead, and even it seems as though that's how it has come into, and in these days, 
and time, but Manasseh means one who makes to forget or who makes to forget means causing forgetfulness, means out of the forgotten, and it means from oblivion. Katabiya Yetanessa is a good Amharic and Ethiopic phrase um, that hopefully will go to the whiteboard and break it down. But that explains that out of oblivion. Now, he was the elder son of Joseph, according to Genesis 41 and 51. His descendants became one of the tribes of Israel, Numbers 2 and 20. But Manasseh also, curiously enough, was a wicked king of Yehuda, was a wicked king of Judah in 2 Kings 21 and 1. Now, in the metaphysical breakdown, you know, it actually helps us to understand each reference you understand, that's used in the Bible, so we'll recognize that truly the Holy Spirit, the Memphis Caduce, did guide it, you understand, guided the writing and communication of the Bible, and even the preservation of the Bible, that we could say we have a version of the Bible that's not the King James Version, because out of Africa came the Garden of Eden. In other words, we have the Metaf Caduce of Negus and Neges. So we can study and compare, you understand, um... We can study and compare the King James side, you know, side by side. And in many areas, the King James is not too bad. It's not too bad a Bible. But if you want to, um, like I say, attain mastery, you have to go beyond just the King James version of the Bible. Now, the meta, the meta, metaphysical, Manasseh, the meaning of Manasseh is who makes to forget. The meaning of Ephraim is doubly fruitful. Manasseh represents understanding, and Ephraim stands for will. The understanding here, the understanding here denotes denial, denotes denial. The understanding here is connected with understanding what to forget about and what to deny. The negative activity. So in a sense, we begin off in our rebirth, we have to exercise the negative, um, the negative activity of mind in the understanding first. It's that negative activity of mind, not thus, not this. As Azaria said to the Queen of Sheba, Negist uh, Makeda, she said, he said, Akolo sinui, not thus, not like this, it is good. You understand? Know not thus like this. It is good to worship the sun, but it's better to he was she wasn't saying to worship the sun, but he's saying that it's not good to worship the sun, kemezi, you understand, in D, in D, in D, in D, in, D, in them heart, like this, it's not, it's not good. It's better to worship the true and living God, who is the creator of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now, the will is the positive or affirmative quality. So, if we were to draw a mind, in a sense, Manasseh is the understanding, is the negative aspect. That's why we had the we had put before the um the minus sign, the minus sign. And Ephraim is the will in the positive or the adding to or the affirming. The affirming aspect, the affirmative attitude is also the affirmative quality and it's the affirmity uh, affirmative ishibai. Ishibai in it. You understand the affirmative attitude of the Aimro, the affirmative attitude of mine. Now, as we mentioned already, Ephraim and Manasseh are brothers, they're Wendemoch. When these two faculties express in harmony, when these two faculties, even of mine, just like the two brothers, when they express in harmony, divine order is established. So when we're able to express both the negative and the positive aspects of our mind based on the absolute in harmony, that's when we begin to establish divine order, you understand, in I and I newborn and regenerated way of life. This is actually one of the first areas of the teaching. You understand, one of the first areas of the teaching, I give thanks to the Holy Spirit of the King of Kings and His Christ for guiding us here, because we knew some of these things here and there, but we wanted to present it in a way that it's not just hopping to the third thing first, but starting with the first things first. So we prayed on it, and so far we give thanks that these prayers have been and are being answered. Now, the will 
and understanding have their centers of activity in the head, in the ras. Once again, we don't have it up here, but from the earlier teaching, we were speaking about the head, the ras. So both of these faculties and aspects have their, have their centers of activity in the head, in the ras, in the self, in the ras. Ras means both head and self. So these two faculties and function, they function through the front brain or what's known as the frontal lobe or the, or the frontal cortex. You understand that a lot of us like a lot of sugar at some time in our life. I'm sure everybody has dealt with sugar. Some may, may have not dealt with sugar, but please um, um, try to reduce your sugar intake. Not, not that you should not have any sugar. I mean, I'm talking about artificial sugar intake because it is said, especially for the children, it is said that sugar prevents the full functioning. Too much sugar, over sugar, prevents the full functioning of the frontal lobe. And that's another trick of the devil, too, as well. So we can see that on one hand, Europeans got sugar in Europe, but on the next hand, niggas were losing their arms and legs. Black men and women were being raped and abused for, to produce this sugar that was being exported so other people could have sugar in their coffee or tea and live the high life, as it were. You understand? So something must have happened to these people where they couldn't see the injustice they were doing. I mean, even the guy who wrote Amazing Grace, I mean, he was actually a trafficker of slaves. I wonder how long it took him to give that up or when exactly did he write that song. But it's amazing that they could have this so-called religiosity but yet be actively engaged in things that somehow their frontal lobe, their ability to discriminate, not just discriminate against black people because they're out of complexion, you know, or their skin color, but to discriminate that what they were doing was wrong. It's good they found sugar, in a sense, and, and herbs to, to, to finally have some more spices than salt in England, you know, for example, lemon sale. But the fact that it took them so damn darn long to recognize exactly the injustice they were doing, it begs the question, could sugar have been blocking too much sugar? Could you can imagine how much sugar they were eating back then. I mean, people nowadays still probably eat too much sugar, but you can just imagine back then where they didn't even know what this was. This was like candy. This was like, oh, sugar. Pour more sugar. Yeah, we got those niggas, you know, chopping down cane and everything. We don't care. We get more ships coming in. More niggas, more ships, more sugar. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine? So something maybe wasn't functioning right with their minds. The mind of white supremacy is not right. But all these functions of will and understanding, they have the activity, sense of their activity in their head and function through the front brain. Now, when the understanding rules without the balancing force of will, when the understanding, Manasseh rules, without the balance of Ephraim, which represents, um, represents the force, the balancing force, the balancing force, even as the cross is that balancing force of, of will, Israel, Israel, and even in covenant, um, Ethiopia, Ethiopia is led to worship false gods, just like when the Ethiopians brought in another trinity, uh, Marx, Engels, and Lenin, and they put them up in Mescal Square. You see these three gods, and the people probably accepted because they said, oh, trinity, this is the trinity that's really doing things for us, and they, and they probably accepted these false gods. To them, it seemed very fear-seeming. But two of these false gods are the uh, Belaam or the Balaam and the Asherot. Two of these false gods are Balaam and Asherot, which represent nature in its various sensuous aspects. Now, because of technology, these things have become you could say staple items. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing because people say, oh, that's out in the jungle or the bush or Africa somewhere. It's not going on in this big city of lights. And Well, yes, it is. Yes, it is because they even update, they've updated their game. But man worships these false gods when he becomes so negative that he thinks that there are powers outside himself that regulate his life. When man begins to worship these false gods, he begins to think that there are powers outside of himself 
that actually regulate his life. And this is, this is the Babylon, the confusion that we're in today. People think that there's other powers, you understand, um, outside of himself. He places his faith in the signs of the zodiac. What my signs say, oh, I can't go out today. He believes... Or he believes in a ruling planet. This planet is my ruling planet. Word. You know what I'm saying? He trusts to luck, to, 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 to Lucifer, luck cipher, to luck. He seeks guidance of familiar spirits. Of, I like when we say the familiar spirits are like spiritually other assholes like yourself. You know what I'm saying? Other idiots that will disagree with you won't even say, nah, I don't think that's wrong. They'll say, you are wonderful. You are the best. He gives himself up to the influence of other minds, mind on mind. Other people can force his will. Why well, I'm just doing this kind of when I'm set, nobody. Aren't you grown? Aren't you a grown person? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, through hypnotism and suggestion. A lot of these things, and this is where the subliminal media and other things are all a part of hypnotism and suggestion at a very technologically advanced stage. He follows unquestionably the advice given in the numerous sects and so-called societies that have been set up for worship by man. You understand know these in these different social constructs, like like the Western Gentile, the, like people say, I want to have a white wedding and got to jump the broom or stamp on the cup or the glass. And all these things have been already set up before, but he follows along with it because this is the way we do it. And they never even figured out for themselves. And even when you come to them and say, there's something evil about it. That's why this thing doesn't work out too well because there's something evil to it. And people say, well, no, nah, I still want it. You see what happened with that, that calcified state of mind. Now, by this worship of false gods, or what we call in Hebrew, low Elohim, they're not high Elohim, they are low Elohim. You understand? Know really to say no Elohim. The worship of false gods, man's mind is opened to the phenomenal, and he places his faith in apparent powers outside his own spiritual consciousness. You should never place no power, uh, you know, faith and powers outside of your own spiritual consciousness. I mean, I mean since as a full-grown and a wacky one who is supposed to be mature and adult, otherwise you're just a big boy or big girl, you still are small where it matters in the state of your mind and, and your knowledge, your basic knowledge, but this is key. It says, by the worship of false gods, man's mind is open. You know when they always say, have an open mind about it. They want you to open your mind to the phenomenal and to place your faith in the apparent powers that are outside of your own spiritual consciousness. Things that you don't even, you don't even understand how it works, but you believe, well, it must be so. You understand? It's like talking to people about the white Jesus, in a sense. And, you know, they're still arguing in favor of the white Jesus, even when you bring the facts to them. You know, but anyway, thus he loses his I am dominion. This is how man loses the Yah, the Yahweh, or the Ehyeh dominion. Like, I am that I am. I, I am who I am. He is who he is. This is forgetfulness of the power of God. Now, when one does that, they forget God. This is why Christ said that you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. And this is how they forget the power of God within themselves, which is speaking about Tawahidah, which is speaking about true, the true Ethiopic Christianity known as Tawahidah. You understand? Know God and man, you understand? Know Reconciled in and through Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ. You don't need no rabbis or no fathers or no other kind of people, you understand, know other than those, you understand, know who represent the truth. And the one who represents the truth is the King of Kings and his Christ for us in this day and time. So this forgetfulness of the power or the Hail, the Hail as the forgetfulness of Hala Selassie among many, within them, and it brings him into condemnation, into condemnation. It is then that the understanding or the ruling factor is put in chains. This is where the understanding, when you get to this point, the understanding now, which is your ruling factor, is put in chains, is bound, is bound in fetters, and you are carried to Babylon. This is how ones are carried to Babylon or to utter confusion, both to utter confusion and to the state of utter confusion. Now, the way of escape, 
And we're just going to go over this since it's a, it's a little bit more to the way of escape since we've come this far. You understand? We don't want to um, 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 leave off on it. But give me uh, Ande, Ande, one moment. Mm-hmm. All right. <clears throat> the way of escape. The way of escape, they have lies, but I like to use lay sometimes. The way of escape, lay, you understand, in the denial of the seeming, of what seems to be. You mess low, you mess low, and then me mess low. You understand, but what do you know instead of in the me mess low? What do you know besides what it seems? The way of the seeming. Manasseh, Manasseh, he humbled himself. And in seeking the real source of wisdom and power through prayer. So he sought Manasseh, the same one who was put in chains, carried into feathers, into Babylon. He had to get to the point, you understand, where he humbled himself. Humbled that ego, false pride. We say, come off, uh, off your false pomps and pride. You understand? Come off that Babylonian mentality and seek the real source of wisdom and power through prayer. But more, no doubt through also study, I don't know how much scripture they had, but they did have certain certain um, scriptural truths that one would focus on to gain wisdom and power and also to, to give wisdom and power to their prayer. Now, when we, co when we open our mind now to the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, the Mensis Kedus, to the Ruach HaKodesh, and declare, so open our mind to the Spirit, and we declare the truth. We declare the truth. The understanding is established, is established in harmony with divine standards. So this is very important. These are all principles, and we're going to go over it in a little more detail, what a feet, you are willing, but just so that when we get at least a basic, a basic overview of it, when we open our mind to the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, and we declare the truth, the understanding, our master while, our understanding is established in harmony with the divine standards, with the divine standard, not man-made standard, not denominational standard, not sectarian standard, not so-called society standards, but with the divine standards. And this is where Second Chronicles 33 and 13, Second Chronicles 33, 33, 13, says that Manasseh, he knew that Yahweh, he knew that Yahweh, he was Elohim. See, then he came to the point of knowledge. Then he really recognized that Yahweh, you know what I'm saying, is the true God. It's like those who might have not received the truth of Rastafari. And they hopefully, and some, many have testified that they get to the point in time when they know that the king of kings is he who is who he is. He is the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. He is the elect of God. You understand? He is, he is that root and manifest as that offspring of great King David. He is the king of kings of Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? He is that point man of revelation and prophecy in this time of Rastafari revelation. Last paragraph to sum this off right here. Manasseh, or Manasseh's being 12 years of age when he began to reign. He was only 12 years old, which is also interesting, too. That means he was really below the age of consent. He didn't re reach his, his, his bar mitz, mitzvah. You understand? He didn't even have a world that is us, a rite of passage as, as a son of the covenant. He was 12 years of age when he began to reign second um, 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 Chronicles 33 and 1. I hope I said Chronicles before. I meant Chronicles sometimes you know, seeing the Quran, you think about, not the chronic, but you think about Corinthians. So just to clarify that right there. But he was 12 years of age, Manasseh, and it means that the negative mentality had involved all the 12 faculties, that the negative mentality, in other words, his negative state of mind now start to feed his tree. When it says the tree of life, that bears 12 sort of fruits. On one level, it does refer to the herb, the herbal tree on that particular level. But at this true spiritual level, it's referring to this tree of life without 12 powers in man. So his mind state started to influence the 12 faculties, and this is where the fruit, this is where the fruitfulness 
comes from it, whether it's good fruit or whether it's bad fruit, whether it's wheat or whether it's weed. Hence, all the thoughts, all the thoughts, it says in the scripture concerning him, were evil. You understand? Know were evil in the sight of Yahweh. Were evil when judged from the sight or perspective of Yod Hey, Wow Hey. Now, at this point, we've been on this subject matter for a, a couple of vids, a couple of vids, and I think we've come at least full cipher with a basic overview. And once again, we recommend this as well as the other study materials. You understand? Some of them we have in PDF form. Others we don't have in that form just yet. Just wanted to get this right here. This is something called the 12 powers. The 12 powers. Mm-hmm. The 12 powers. And it's interesting at the end of this, how the Holy Spirit has led us in this particular teaching right here. At the end of Manasseh, most of it probably started from um, Manasseh at first, but that would lead you off differently. We follow the prophetic vision, and we start with Ephraim, who was who was put to, as the firstborn, and then we ended off on Manasseh. You understand and understand the relationship between the understanding and the will, or in its proper orientation, the will and understanding. The will and understanding. This is what um, Yaakov understood that even his son um, Yosef, even Yosef was a wise man, but he, you know, Yosef. He was a, he, he he basically felt that something. Remember, he's coming out of Egypt too, um, Joseph, and the Egyptians were were, were sticklers to a certain type of uh, order of things, especially in things like blessing and others uh, other things, and that was righteous. But w w that particular time, and the particular time that even the Israelites were about to come into with the Exodus, was a transitional with a certain epoch where we're going through a transition, like now in 2011, as we go to 2012, it is also a transitional. So this is another very good book, too. Once one understands this book, it says for us, it's Rastafari. When you understand what it means, the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ, the importance and the role of Christ and his kingly character, you understand, as a Rastafari, then these books take on an added significance. And what's interesting, very, very interesting, about these books from the um, um, Unity Classic Library and this one as well, um, Metaphysical Bible uh, uh, Dictionary. I think this is also the Unity, um, the Unity, who, who prints this one? Yeah, Unity Books. Unity Books, Unity Classic Library. And... Um, like I said, look it up. It was first printed in 1931. The 13th printing of the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary was uh, 1995. And I guess the copy I have is, is, number, is number 13. And then this book here, The Twelve Powers, remember how we just summed off on the Twelve Powers or the Twelve Faculties in man. And one may be curious about these Twelve Powers or 12 faculties, which are likened to the 12 thrones. You remember when Christ said, and in the regeneration, you understand those who are following me in the regeneration will be sitting on 12, on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Very important to really understand the context of that, to gain the proper overstanding. So we, can, we definitely can say there's a difference between understanding in that sense and overstanding, because I am wrong. The mind is really the overstanding. And the Mastawa related to Manasseh is more likened to the understanding, if you please. So this particular book, which we'll go into at another time, but just show you this graphic right here. This, um, this graphic right here, as you can see. This um, graphic right here which is showing the 12 powers, the 12 powers in man, the 12 powers in man, right? And how the 12 powers in man are likened to the 12 tribes of Israel, are likened also to the, um, the 12 um, um, disciples of Christ, as well as the, the, the apostles, the 12 apostles, 
you know what I'm saying, minus one and adding a next one to replace that one that was minus, na namely Iskarotawi, the Iskarotawi or Iscariot, whose name was Judah, which is symbolic. Actually, Judah is symbolic of the, the false so-called Jew, or the Jew that refuses to accept the Moshiach, you know what I'm saying, the Moshiach, you know what I'm saying, the Messiah. So this book here will kind of catch you up on the 12 powers of man. And at another time, we'll get into some of the teaching on, on this. But how it connects with Manasseh, I just thought it was very interesting to bring this to your attention. So at this particular point, we're going to pause for the cause, Yovas, and um, we pray in the King of Kings and His Christ that this will be communicated to those who can receive the Holy Spirit, you know, and to grow and to build as it said, to build on the rock. Shalom.